Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop. And today I'm gonna show you how I did uh, a canvas extension on this photo um, and added a sky overlay in afterwards. So um, this photo started out just like this. Um, it's the subjects are sort of right in the center um, and there's not a whole lot of room around them for a sky overlay. Um, I, I mean, there is, there's a lot of white space, but I wanted to create more room where the sky sort of takes over the whole photo and my subjects are sort of off in a corner. Um, I hope this will make sense as we get started. Um, let me go ahead here. I'm going to grab my crop tool and oh, there we go. Okay. And it's set to original ratio. I want to keep it at that. And so basically what I'm going to do here is just stretch this top left corner up until I like the framing on my subject. So basically what I want to do is stop it once the little cross point here is right over my subjects. So basically they're on one of those um, thirds, the, the, the crop is um, cut into thirds here and I want them right on the cross point. So I'm just gonna let go when I like how this is set up and then hit the check mark when I'm done. Okay, so now that that's done, I basically need to fill in all this extra space um, so that it matches the image. So what I'm gonna do here is a quick technique. Sometimes, well, usually it requires a little tweaking afterward, but it takes um, a lot of the guesswork out of it. It kind of gets you started. And a lot of times it does a really good job. So what I'm gonna do here is just grab my lasso tool and over in my tools panel and I'm just gonna sweep around the edge of the photo here and all of this oops went out of frame a little um, around all this excess here so I'm just gonna sweep all around and then meet back here and it doesn't have to be perfect um, basically you just want to get everything in there that you can if you'll notice down here in the bottom left hand corner I missed a spot so hold down your shift key and just circle it and it'll add it to that selection Okay, so once we're done there, what I'm gonna do is go to Edit, Fill, and I'm gonna choose Content Aware. And so basically this is Photoshop determining what should go in that space. And this tends to take a few minutes. Um, it especially will here because I'm recording my screen for you. Uh, so just bear with me while it fills it in. Um, but again, like I said, it oftentimes does a really good job, but it, it sometimes does require some tweaking. Um, I'll notice pattern repetition and stuff like that. So we can tweak it as we see fit. Okay, so there we have it. I'm gonna hit Control or Command D on my keyboard to deselect um, so that it just gets rid of those marching ants and so I can see what we're working with here. So um, if you'll notice, it sort of created this on a curve here, which I actually don't mind. I shot this photo at the bottom of a hill and I sort of did want it to look like it was slanted a little. So I'm gonna accentuate that a little bit using the liquify filter. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. What I'm gonna do is just take this layer here and duplicate it by dragging it right over this sheet of paper icon at the bottom of my layers panel and just letting it go. And this doubles up and um, so that we can edit the second layer while keeping our original intact. Um, granted, it's not actually the original, we've added the canvas extension before we duplicated the layer, but I will not save over my original, so we'll make sure to preserve that. Um, anywho, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go to Filter, Liquify, and wait for that panel to pull up. Okay, and so I'm just gonna grab the Forward Warp tool, which is the first one here, little finger pointing, and I'm gonna make my brush rather large here. Okay, and so I'm just gonna adjust this hill so that it looks a little bit um, smoother in its transition. Now you'll notice if you lift up on the, on the edge of your photo, it will leave a gap here. So all I do to uh, fix that is just make my brush smaller, and I'm doing this with the left bracket key, by the way, um, right next to the letter P on my keyboard. And I'm just gonna make my brush smaller and just grab that ground and just drag it down until that gap is covered. Okay, so here on this side, I'm gonna make my brush larger again, and I'm gonna drop this part a little as well. And I'm just adjusting my brush tool as I go. Um, feel free to experiment and see what works best. And you'll notice I came over a little bit too far to the left, so it brought back in that, um, that little gap. So I just moved it back to the right to get rid of that. <clears throat> okay, so 
basically I think that looks pretty good I just kind of want it to look like a hill here and I think this part right here might just be a little bit high so I'm just gonna make my brush as big as I can right over that uh, curved angle there and just sort of drop it down a tiny bit okay and that looks pretty good if you notice any repetition in the flowers we can clone or heal that as needed okay so there's our adjustment so far so there's the before and there's the after uh, not a huge difference but if your horizon was completely straight before and you use this curve tool it gives it sort of a, a neat effect like you're using a wide angle lens or something like that um, okay so if you do notice some repetition in the flowers what you can do is you can grab your healing brush tool and you can make a selection somewhere else let's say that this flower here matches too closely this flower here um, so what we can do is just grab a different area on the image wherever you want you can experiment I'm just going to grab right here over these little plants and just sort of make my brush smaller and just paint right over that little yellow one just to cover that up. So I didn't repeat the whole pattern there, just a little portion of it. And you can, you know, I'm alt clicking here to grab this source and then you can repeat that as well if you need to somewhere else just to sort of make a different pattern. Again, this is up to you. You could have left the yellow flower if you wanted. It's, it's your choice. Um, also, I noticed there's three dark spots here that sort of repeat. So what you can do is you can just grab the clear sky and then just sweep up on those little spots just to sort of get rid of them so they don't repeat. And we'll do that one too so it's um, not repeated. There we go. Um, so I actually think that one looks too much like a, like a mouse cursor, like a cross point or something. So I'm just going to blur a couple of those out with using the healing brush um, and I think that looks pretty good so I'll just leave it there this is definitely up to you you can tweak as much as you want um, there's a, a dot here I'm just gonna get rid of that as well by clicking on the white sky and then just painting over it um, you may need to go over it a couple times if it doesn't do it right the first time okay so there's that now what I'm gonna do is just add my sky in so we're gonna go to file place embedded if you're on an earlier version of Photoshop it might just say file place um, I'm going to scroll down to Violet. This is the Scenic Skies Pack 2 collection. I'm just going to grab the overlay Violet and hit Place. And because we've extended our canvas, the sky overlay actually looks smaller than our image. That's totally fine. I'm just going to put it up in the corner and stretch it to fill the whole photo. Now, since we've adjusted that horizon line and it reaches the bottom of the photo, the sky reaches the bottom of the photo, I'm going to make this sky just as large as the whole photo. On your image, you might just want to make it as as big as the sky opening is wherever the sky touches in your photo since mine pretty much reaches the bottom of my frame I'm gonna make my sky as big as the entire image okay then I'm gonna hit the check mark at the top of my screen and my next step is to change the uh, blend mode from normal I uh, first I want to make sure that my sky overlay layer is selected mine is automatically because it's the very last thing that I did if you accidentally click something else though you will want to go back and just select your sky layer let's say you had accidentally clicked a different one go back here click your sky layer and then where it says normal you're going to change this to multiply and this will allow your sky to go ahead and begin blending with your photo um, from there we're going to add a layer mask which is right here at the bottom of your layers panel again I have my sky layer selected when I'm doing this um, so I'm just going to click this rectangle button with the circle inside and it adds that white layer mask when your layer mask is white, it means that whatever is on this layer, in our case, our sky, is completely shown in your image. So if the whole layer mask is white, that sky is completely visible everywhere on your photo. In our case, we want to paint with black to remove the sky anywhere it doesn't belong. So over my subjects and over the ground. I am, instead of painting the black color in, I'm going to gradually um, fade the white into black. Um, I hope this makes sense. Basically, um, I want to sort of fade the sky into the photo and allow it to gradually disappear as it gets to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is grab my gradient tool. Um, I'm just if, you, if yours doesn't show if it's the paint bucket tool or something like that, just right click on it and you'll see gradient tool within the fly out menu. So just select gradient tool and you want to make sure that your layer mask is selected. This will not work if it's not on your layer mask. Um, so Next, I just make sure that white is my foreground color. If it's not, you can swap right here and just adjust. Oh, it's not letting me. Oh, it's already, goodness, sorry. If, um, if yours isn't already set there, um, you can hit this little arrow button and it'll flip flop back and forth. Okay, so I just want white to be on top. Um, this is my personal preference because I go from the top down. 
again, if, if you make a mistake the first time, you can just switch your colors and try again. Okay, so since we created this angle that the subjects are on and it's sort of like a hillside, I want my sky to sort of fade from the top left of the image and or start strong at the top left and fade toward the bottom right. So I'm gonna kind of go at an angle here with this image. So what I'm gonna do is start about halfway up the sky and this is just experimentation. I'm just gonna try it and see what I think. And I'm gonna let it go right over my subjects. And I feel like that's a little bit too harsh of a line, so I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna start at the top of my sky a little higher this time and drop it down to the ground. Oh, and that is a little worse. Okay, so I'm gonna come here to the bottom of the sky. And again, this is just trial and error. So you can try this as many times as you'd like. Okay, so bottom of the sky to the ground worked best for my liking of this photo. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is once your layer mask has been faded, um, it takes away a lot of the work. It's sort of blended a lot of that for you. However, there might still be sky pattern over your subjects. Um, and there might be some sky that got removed that you wanna add back in. So this is where we can tweak with a brush. So I'm gonna grab my brush tool. And remember, anywhere that's white, your sky is showing. Anywhere that's black, your sky is hidden. Okay, so if you wanna hide more of the sky, you just switch your color to black. And in this case, I can go to 100% opacity of, on this brush by hitting the zero on my keyboard. Making my brush as small as I can to just fit right here in my subjects and just making sure to paint all that sky off of the skin here. And this will just ensure that um, you can't see the sky texture on them. Now you will definitely wanna zoom in here and get really close on your photo and a little more precise than I'm getting here, um, especially if you're printing these images large, like on a canvas. Um, but okay, so once I've at 100% opacity removed this from their skin, I'm gonna go down to about 30% opacity or 40% opacity, I'm sorry, uh, by hitting the four on my keyboard. And so now I'm just gonna sort of fade it over his clothes here. Now, and usually over clothes, I'm not super concerned with the sky color or texture showing, so I'm a little bit um, more gradual with that. Over the skin, I wanna make sure it's completely removed, um, but over clothes, I'm not so picky. I actually think it kind of looks a little better, like they look like they belong in a scene with that color sky when the color is sort of affecting the subjects themselves. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just go back to 100% opacity. I notice a little darkening of her chin here. Um, you may wanna zoom in and get super perfect on this on your image. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it there for now. And then what I wanna do is switch my color back to white and I'm gonna add the sky back in anywhere that it re got removed too strongly. Uh, so I'm going to do that at 10% opacity, and I'm going to do that by hitting the 1 on my keyboard, and you'll notice the opacity has changed to 10%. Okay, so I'm going to make my brush larger by using the right bracket key, and I'm just going to paint anywhere I want that sky to be a little darker. So when I use that gradient tool, it faded the sky um, as I wanted it to, but in this case, I want to just add a little bit more back in um, selectively. So that's what makes this pretty cool. And the gradient tool is awesome because when you're outside, skies naturally sort of fade as they reach the horizon line. So this kind of adds to that believability factor by making the, the sky really strong up top and then sort of you know, gradually getting lighter at the bottom. It enhances the believability there. So this is pretty much where I would stop at this point. I'm, if I was gonna continue editing this for delivery, I would you know, add my, my light adjustments or my shadow adjustments or enhance the color. Um, but basically I just wanted to show you how to extend the canvas, um, adjust that horizon line if necessary, um, sort of clean up any repetitive areas and then add the sky in. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If you get stuck anywhere or need trouble, or I mean have trouble, sorry, <laughs> you don't need trouble. Um, if you have any trouble um, or you have a question, you can send me an email at morgan at morganburks.com or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash morganburksphotography. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.